tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. I don't think I'm going out on a limb saying that the pandemic has affected each and every one of us. As we can tell from a lot of the speeches that we've heard today, each one was reflecting a little bit about the pandemic and how it changed their attitude and perspective on life. And I too think that the pandemic offered many of us an opportunity to discover or rediscover certain talents that we had. I, for one, was able to rediscover the talent of taking a good photograph. I say that because I went to art school, and of course, art school is a place where you spend a lot of time and you're not really sure what you're gonna do after you graduate. <laughs> but I did learn a lot about art, and I also learned a lot about photography. I had a habit every morning during the pandemic, I was living in Brooklyn, New York, of getting up early and going for a run. But I had my phone with me. And thanks to technology, the best camera I ever owned was in my pocket. I decided to take photos every time I went out running. And from what we got here, I was able to once again remember all the skills I learned in art school about composition, about angles, about light. And I tried to use all those things as I looked and gazed upon the morning. I took all these photos and I put them in a book together and reflected upon each day of the quarantine and how each day was a way for me to rediscover a hidden talent that I had. Thinking about photography, though, made me realize that it wasn't just so much about capturing the aesthetic of a moment. The pandemic reminded all of us of how much we are bombarded with imagery. But thank God, because we know that each one of us became a member of a Brady Bunch Zoom session. Each one of us knew that photography, leading to video, offered us a window into what we were doing with our lives. Because life did go on during the pandemic, and babies were born. Some of my friends had babies, and I even earned a new nephew out of the deal. My first window into knowing who these people were, who these babies were, were through my phone, through photography. So without question, photography has completely influenced and affected the way we view everything in the world, especially people. Because photography doesn't only allow us to take photographs, it gives us a way of understanding how to view situations. I'm sure if someone told you, hey, I want you to meet this person, maybe the first thing you did was you went to Google, you found their social profile, looked at them, or if you were about to hire someone, you went to their LinkedIn page. You got a snapshot of who you thought this person was. This is how I think we look at people each day, as snapshots of what we want them to be, or at least how they're presenting themselves to be. But imagine if there was a world where there was no photography, that there were no cameras, there was no video. What would we be left with? Well, we'd be left with painters, and canvases. But ironically speaking, if there was no photography, we would not have something known as modern art. Sure, I'm sure many of you could relate to this guy looking at this Jackson Pollock at MoMA, <laughs> thinking like, I don't get it. When I was in kindergarten, I think I'd produce better art. Many people would scoff at modern art, thinking it's like, I, it's too far out not representational, too abstract. But why did artists decide to take this path of giving us a window into a creative aspect that just did not necessarily make sense on the surface? Well, it was because of photography. Once the photograph emerged on the scene and you could replicate something perfectly, what was an artist to do? They would no longer be judged on how well they could represent something as it appears in nature. So artists did the one thing that they're best at doing. They became creative. We first move into a period known as Impressionism. Claude Monet was famous for going out and taking his canvas and painting early in the morning as the sun was rising. 
going in the middle of the day when the sun was its brightest, and at the end of the day when dusk was hitting over the land. What he decided to do was to take elements of the morning, the high noon, and the evening and put it in one place on his campus, something a photograph could never do. Later on, Pablo Picasso introduced the world to something known as Cubism, something that was even further out than Impressionism. What did Cubism review or reveal to us? The fact that many, we as people are multifaceted. This image here of this girl before a mirror shows that when she gazes upon herself, she sees both her youth, her old age, she sees the things she likes, she sees the things she doesn't like. All happening in one place, at one moment, on one canvas. It seems to me that the modern art and the artists who convey these pieces of art, perhaps they've understood reality better than we do. Because who are we as people? We're people who are caught up in the regrets of our past, worried about the anxieties of our future, yet we still present ourselves as we are in the present moment, snapshots. And how often do we look at people and wonder, I just don't understand why they do this or do that, or why their attitude seems to have to be this way or that way. We end up scratching our heads, just like we would scratch our heads in front of a Jackson Pollock saying, I don't get it. But yet, perhaps, modern art could give us a way to be able to engage with people in ways that photography never can. Because we get his people as a story. So it may be hard to imagine a world without photography, but I would like to propose today that how creative it would be to imagine a world of every person as a work of modern art. Thank you.